Welcome to the John Gets Games channel update vlog for October 2019. As usual, I have a few things I'll be covering today, including several general updates. Now before we jump into that, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video, you please click the like button for it down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Also, if you would like to directly support the channel in the creation or future vlogs like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support. You'll find a bunch of ways to help things out over there, and there are some pretty cool bonuses that come along with some of them, including voting on a couple of the videos that I film each month. All right, let's now jump into the main part of this vlog, and we'll start with the general updates. Now, as usual, I'll briefly mention the Patreon campaign. Uh, there were five new people who joined into the campaign over this last month, and a couple people who dropped out, so it was largely a uh, even month overall, and it's just really great to see that extra support coming in, so thank you to all of the new people, and of course, to all of the other people who have been supporting this channel for years. Uh, let's now move on to the next general update, and this one has to do with the advertisements. Uh, so, in the last update vlog, which I put out just like two or three weeks ago, I announced that I was going to be turning on ads for the channel. It's something I've been putting off for years, like literally since I very first started this channel like five and a half years ago, and I finally decided that it's something that I should try to see how much money I'll actually make and to see if this is actually worth it. Now there is a variety of ways uh, that you can turn the ads on and off, and I learned something uh, that made me feel a little bit stupid. So you can monetize all of your videos. If you click monetize and don't do anything else, then what it does is it puts a little uh, advertisement up on the main page for YouTube. I guess it goes up there if you are not maximized. So if this window is small and you can you normally see like uh, suggestions over there and comments down below, then there's like a little ad up there and I should have been doing that for the last five and a half years because nobody even sees those ads really. Uh, it would not have made much money, but I think over the course of a couple million views, that would have added up to, I don't know, at least a couple hundred dollars, which would have helped pay for, you know, tickets to one of these conventions that I go to, to, you know, get games to cover. So uh, I feel a little bit silly for not turning that on. But anyway, I have now obviously turned that on. And I also have the five second skippable ads at the start of every one of the videos on the channel now. So I've been doing this for a couple weeks and I, I don't really want to talk about the actual numbers, the amount of money that I'm making, but I do want to say that I think it's worth it. Uh, so far, I'm making about 80% what I was hoping I would, so not quite up to the threshold that I thought this would end up being uh, worth uh, at this point, but I think 80% is still uh, well and good enough for me to go ahead with this. Um, the funds that I get uh, for, for uh, from these ads should cover a large part of the, uh, the costs that I have for going to these conventions, and uh, that's a big way that I can uh, really grow the channel, you know, get the games that I need, increase the uh, relationships that I have with publishers to um, just get, keep the overall quality of the channel going. So um, that is uh, kind of how I'm rationalizing it. Uh, so far, it seems like nobody's really complaining, so I appreciate that. Uh, and if you have any uh, comments about the fact that the ads have been on uh, for a couple weeks, then feel free to let me know about it. Uh, so I guess to sum that up, I am planning on leaving them on as they are right now for the foreseeable future. All right, the next uh, thing to talk about is, well, I guess audio once again. Uh, I feel like every five or so months I, I come on here and I say, I want to fix my audio, you know, and then I, you know, buy a gadget or two and then I usually just return it. And that is something that actually happened over this last month. Um, I was uh, reading a uh, thread on Reddit and at some point somebody mentioned, uh, a couple people mentioned actually that, you know, oh, John Gets Games makes great videos. It's a shame about his audio though. It's really hard to listen to. And, and uh, you know, when I I see that, I, I, mean, I scratch my head because, you know, I spent so many hours of my life and uh, hundreds and hundreds of dollars on nice microphones and recorders trying to make good audio quality for this, but I am not an audio professional. And uh, honestly, to me, I feel like sound is a bit magical. Uh, in my uh, old career that I've been doing for like 12 years, uh, we I do event production and I prioritize or I specialize on power and lighting. And we have a bunch of people at our company who do audio and, you know, they set up big speaker systems and they have all these crazy boards with knobs and faders and everything like that. And, you know, I've been taught how those work, you know, 10 to 15 times at a very high level anyway. And it's still just, it seems like magic to me. So um, I did buy a new headset uh, for recording playthroughs this last month, spent a couple hundred dollars on it, tried it out, thought it sounded terrible. So I returned it. So I, I'm out no money there, thankfully. Uh, but it does have me thinking about trying to tweak the way that I process the uh, sound that's uh, that you're hearing right now. Uh, in Final Cut Pro, there is um, a lot of very high level things you could do, like a little checkbox here and a little checkbox there. But then underneath the hood, there are like 30 different effects that you can put in that do a wide variety of things that I do not understand. So uh, 
um, I've been messing around with some of them like noise gates and whatnot. In fact, I put out a poll on uh, my Twitter account uh, last week or so, and I said, you know, here are two options. What do you think? One option was what I've been doing for years now, and the other was some tweaks that I thought might be better, and two-thirds of the people said they preferred it the way it was. Now, the way it was is, you know, potentially a little bit compressed. It's potentially a little bit nail nasally. And part of that, I think, is the compression, and part of that is the fact that I have a somewhat nasally voice coming out of my head, so there's not a lot I can do about that. But um, either way, I guess uh, the, the point that I'm getting at here is I'm continuing to try and play around and tweak with this stuff. Uh, part of me feels like maybe I should bug one of my uh, coworkers who know a lot about audio to tell me how some of these effects work. But either way, audio is something that I'm, I'm continually trying to make better with this channel as time goes on, even though I know it's not, uh, it's not perfect overall. Uh, all right, let's now move on to the next update. And this one is uh, a maybe update. It seems like a lot of the things I'm saying right now are a bit wishy-washy, but um, I'm kind of curious to hear your opinion on this idea of splitting my impressions vlogs up a little bit more. Uh, so if you are familiar with some of the other vlogs I do, um, I cover my initial impressions of all of the board games that I play over the course of a month. And it's gotten to the point sometimes where I'm covering like 12 to 14 games, which is just a lot, and that impressions vlog is like an hour and a half or more long. Also, I found that as time has gone on, I'm talking more in those impressions vlogs. Like, they're honestly becoming mini reviews. You know, I, I kind of decided to move away from doing reviews, but now I'm back to talking like for 15 and to 17 minutes about my opinion of a game, which is what I used to do in reviews. Uh, so part of me is feeling like maybe doing a bi-monthly impressions vlog where I cover every game I played for the last two weeks just to split it up a little bit more. I'm not committing to that at all. Maybe that's something I'll do when I know that I'm playing a lot of games to try and fit that in overall. Uh, I'm just curious to hear what people's opinion of that is overall. Uh, I know that at one point, um, about a year ago, I considered sharding them out entirely so that every single impression was specific to that game, but I don't want to be flooding people's timelines with all these little five to 10 minute videos. And I know some people would like that, but others wouldn't. And this is just the way I kind of want to do it. So anyway, I'd love to hear your feedback about that. And uh, the last update that I have is actually not really John Gets Games related at all. Uh, it's more of a John Cox, uh, me as a person uh, update. I got uh, laser eye surgery last week. And now I've mentioned this in a couple of my previous vlogs because I was a bit anxious about it. In fact, in my last Games Radar vlog, I was wearing glasses because you're not allowed to wear contacts for a couple weeks before the surgery. So I had that surgery last Thursday, which was about five or six days ago at this point, And it went really well. It's, it was like a 10 minute, very strange uh, procedure where they cut open your eye, they blast it with lasers, they flap it back down again. And uh, I had a very uncomfortable six hours after that because my eyes were all swollen. But um, even uh, at that point, even just, you know, two minutes after the surgery had happened, walking down a hall, I could already see so much better. Uh, my eyesight, since I was about seven years old, uh, has lost focus about here. Like I had that much and then it was all blurry after that. So uh, I've worn contacts for most of my life and I finally decided to bite the bullet and get laser eye surgery. And I'm, I'm happy that I did at this point. I'm having to put um, medicine or or eye drops in my eyes every single hour for weeks, which is, you know, a bit of annoying, a bit annoying, but, you know, this is going to give me a lifetime of much better vision, which is, uh, I think, certainly going to be worth it overall. Uh, so, yeah, I don't really have anything else to say about that. Yeah, I'm not wearing contacts anymore. Hey, <laughs> occasionally one of my contacts would get messed up and I'd like pull it out when I was recording and then I would just be looking at a very vague, blurry camera hoping I was looking at the right spot. But uh, anyway, that's minutia that I don't think anybody cares about. So let's now move on to the next segment, uh, which is the shifting shelf. So uh, over here, I talk about the games that I've pulled off my shelf and, and out of the collection this last month, and then I also talk about the new games that are coming in. Uh, so let's start with the stuff that's coming off, and in alphabetical order, it looks like there are six games. So the first one is Century A New World. This is the third and final game in the Century Trilogy. It is a worker placement style game that was very light. Um, it was a worker bumping style worker placement game where I can go where you went, but I have to send more workers, and it knocks your worker back out so that you can use them again later, and I thought it was fine. I played it a couple times. I did a tutorial and playthrough for it because it won uh, the bonus video poll uh, last month, I think. So if you're curious about it, you can definitely go check that out. I think the tutorial was very quick for that one. Um, but honestly, it's just not something that really engaged me. The game was fine. I didn't see anything necessarily wrong with it. I just didn't really feel like playing it anymore. So I decided to get rid of it. In fact, uh, one of the people in my greater gaming group wants it. So I'm just gifting it over to them. 
All right, the next game that I'm getting rid of is Deluvia Project. Uh, now, I actually just got this a couple months ago from Tasty Mitchell Games. This is their new version. They sent me this and Old West Empresario. I'm keeping Old West Empresario because I think that game is super cool. And Deluvia Project, I played once. Now, I covered my impressions of that play one or two months ago, and I talked quite a bit about it. So uh, if you're interested, then definitely check out uh, one of those previous impressions vlogs. Um, but as the next month or two has gone by, and I think I might have even mentioned this in the impressions bit there. I just, I don't find myself going after uh, playing it again. Uh, I enjoyed the play. Uh, honestly, like pretty much every minute of the play, I was having fun. But it's one of those things where it's like, if I'm going to play a more than two hour uh, Euro game with uh, resource acquisition and conversion and constructing buildings and all that, there's just other games that I would rather play. I'm, I don't want to spout any off the top of my head because the moment I say that, I can't think of a single game that I've ever played in my life. <laughs> but uh, it just, it's not one that I think that stuck out enough for me, especially considering it had a uh, rather sizable teach. So I'm uh, going to be getting rid of that one. And now uh, the next one I'm getting rid of is Eclipse. Uh, now this one, this has been on my shelf forever. In fact, I was going to look up how many times I played the game, but I haven't yet. So actually let me uh, real quick cheat. And looking at Board Game Geek, it appears I have 11 logged plays of Eclipse. Now, this came out in 2011, and I bought it in 2011. I was so excited about this game when it first came out. Uh, this is a game that plays up to six players. It um, takes many hours, you know, like at least two hours, usually three to maybe even four hours if you're playing with uh, six people. And it's a Euro game of space exploration and conquest. Uh, it's got this amazing thing where you, um, you deploy different uh, starships and fighters and whatnot, but you can actually change their build out so you can like change what weapons each uh, with the, the, the fighters have or the dreadnoughts have you can change their engines you can change their shields their computers all of this type of stuff you can give them plasma torpedoes which was a big contentious thing about the game that I won't go into right now uh, so this is a game that um, obviously I played a lot 11 times for a th usually three plus hour game is is certainly a lot and that more tells you about my tastes in board gaming eight or so years ago. Uh, I used to uh, host what I called epic board game days where I'd say, come on over and we're going to play two or maybe three big games. We're only going to play games that are like three plus hours. So we'd sit down and we'd play, you know, a five player game of Dominant Species. We would play Eclipse. We would play, um, you know, potentially games like Twilight Imperium, uh, the version that was out back then. I can't remember exactly what it was. But anyway, uh, among me and many of my friends, we had several of these big games. So I got a lot of these played. In fact, it's worth noting, uh, way back then, uh, long before John Gets Games existed, I had a GoPro and I took a couple time lapses of those games. Uh, one of them was a full six player game and I took a time lapse from the ceiling. And I'll put a link for it um, up there and down below if you're curious. I, always, I thought it was kind of cool uh, seeing how the whole thing worked. But either way, <laughs> as time goes on, I am much less interested in flying around space and shooting my opponents and rolling a whole bunch of dice to see if I was able to take them down. Um, so I feel like I kind of enjoyed this game enough and I've, I've kept it in my collection all these years, even though I haven't played it in probably you know six plus, maybe seven years. Um, I've kept it because I'm like, well, someday I might want to come back and play this big epic game again. But at this point, now, I just don't think I'm going to get back there. Uh, I do have a copy of Twilight Imperium 4, which technically takes up more space, um, but I think I might be more interested in busting that one out if I'm going to be playing a big, massive space opera style game uh, instead of Eclipse. Um, I know that a new version of Eclipse came out relatively recently that looks uh, very pretty. Uh, supposedly, it balanced a lot of things like those plasma missiles. I was one of those people who did think that they were overpowered. By the way, I'm not going to go into the details, but it was an incredibly contentious thing with ma massive forum posts on board game geek way back in the day um I, I did i was not a fan of the plasma missile thing but anyway they 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 made them cost energy that'll make sense for some people uh so anyway I, I decided to get rid of this game maybe someday i'll get to play the new version and i certainly would be interested because i do have some nostalgic fondness for the original game because obviously i played it 11 times uh so yeah that's why i'm getting rid of eclipse um so we can now move on to a very light game this is number nine uh now this is a very easy game to teach. Um, you can teach it in just a couple minutes. Um, it's a, a game where everybody plays simultaneously off of a single card draw. Like, I draw a card, everybody does the same thing, but they do it slightly differently in their area. So everybody places the same tile down. And you're trying to stack these tiles on top of each other. The higher they go, the more points they're worth. Um, I actually taught an entire bar of people this game at Essen Spiel two years ago. Uh, it was like 
I don't know, 40 or 50 people, and I was yelling the rules out to this big, crowded, loud bar. It was it was actually really fun. We all played the same game at the same time. Um, but anyway, I, it's a pretty big box. You know, it's like, yay, big, like a somewhat standard, almost euro style box for a game that only plays about 15 minutes. And honestly, I think I'd rather just play Karuba or Karuba the card game, both that I own, that are a similar style of game. So I decided to make the decision and cut one of them, and that ended up being number nine. Uh, we can now move on to Pipeline. Now, I played this game once uh, a couple months ago, and I covered it in my initial impressions, and I talked about it quite a bit there. And um, I don't know if you could read from that impression, but my vibe on the game was that I enjoyed myself while I was playing it, but I don't really think it's my kind of game. Uh, now, in general, I do like engine building style games, but this is an engine building game where you start the game off with almost nothing, and you go into debt, and it's awful, and you're starving, it's awful, and then suddenly you explode like a rocket going off into space. And the sooner you can explode with your points, the better you're going to do. And in fact, in that one game we played, I ended with a score of mid 700s and it was a two player game. And my, and my one opponent had a score in the mid 200s. So I had like 500 more points than they did. And it was because I got my engine going like two turns before them. And it was just kind of exponential crazy growth. Now, some people love that. Um, in this game, there's also a lot of spatialness where you're building out this set of pipes in front of you, trying to match the colors to make them as long as possible to upgrade your crude oil into better oil so that you could sell it to get money and then spend the money to buy more oil to turn it into better oil so you can sell it to get, sell it to get money, etc. And I don't know, I just, it was a decent bit of a teach. And while it was fun while I was playing it, I, I would just rather play other games. You know, that one took a couple hours for that two player game, which I'm sure could go down with experience. But I don't know, I, I just, I'm, I haven't found myself really wanting to go back to it. Maybe I kind of want to want to play it again. And it takes up a decent amount of space. So I think this one should probably uh, get moved on to somebody who's going to enjoy it more. Uh, the last game that I'm getting rid of this month is Sierra West. Now, uh, this one was sent over to me so that I could do a sponsored tutorial and playthrough for uh, for the channel. And this is a really strange game. I covered my impressions of it when I played a prototype of it back at Gamma. So that was, uh, I guess, March or April this year, if you want to go back and take a look at that. And uh, there's a lot of cool things going on in this game. Um, it's a strange one where you only take like seven or eight turns, but each turn you're going to do like you know, between 10 and 30 micro actions where you are getting different things and spending things to get extra bonuses to then spend this to get this. And uh, you're popping back all over the place doing some kind of um, a little bit of engine building style stuff. Uh, you're doing a little bit of deck building where you're adding new cards into this deck of cards and you're splaying the cards out in this really strange way that builds out these paths. There's a lot of aesthetically cool things going on in this game and a lot of cool decisions to go along with it as well. But... <sighs> I feel like I'm saying this a lot. Uh, for the amount of time it takes to teach the game, uh, to the enjoyment that I get from actually playing it the couple times that I have, I'm just not sure that it's worth it. Uh, as time goes on, I am less uh, attracted to playing games that have long uh, rule sets, that have lots of complicated systems that all uh, fit together really nicely and kind of they're intricate. Like, I can appreciate those, but when it comes to actually sitting down to play them, I'm becoming more interested in playing streamlined overall experiences like games like Pioneer or Fresco or something like that. Uh, so anyway, a Sierra West is a game that I could see playing again, but it takes up a decent amount of space and I don't think it's probably going to happen. So uh, it's possible this one might go on to somebody in my friend group and I'll have another opportunity to play. I certainly would not say no to playing it again. And I know I'd have to teach it in that environment, but um, at this point, I'm not finding myself pushing to play it again, which means it's probably time for it to move on. Uh, Alright, so now we can move on to the games that I acquired, which is more than I got rid of. Uh, it looks like that is eight new games. Uh, so these are in alphabetical order. The first one is Bloomtown. Now this is a first release from a publisher called Sidekick Games. Uh, it's uh, designers of a few games that I'm uh, familiar with, like uh, 13 Days and Copenhagen. I forget the actual designers' names. Uh, this is a tile-laying game, a uh, city-building tile-laying style game that looks like it might have some Baron Park uh, vibes to it, where where you put a tile down is going to dictate what tiles you take so that you can then place them in the future to take more tiles kind of thing. So uh, I'm curious to try that one out. Uh, the next game that I got is Cloudspire. Now, <laughs> uh, I actually got this uh, game because I'm going to be doing a sponsored tutorial and playthrough for the one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one PvP version of this game. Uh, I said yes to getting it from the publisher. They reached out to me and <laughs> they sent me 
freaking everything. I mean, it was like boxes and boxes and this huge man. It's just a ridiculous amount of stuff. So I have Cloudspire. I haven't actually cracked the shrink on any of it yet. Um, it appears to be a MOBA style game where you create these uh, autonomous minions every turn and they kind of march across the train to destroy the other person's fortress while you also control these heroes that wander around and get stuff and level up and do that kind of stuff. So I'm curious to dig into that more. I, I read the rules, you know, a month or two ago when I said yes to doing the video. I don't really remember much of it anymore. Um, but that is a video I'm hoping to work in at some point in November. Uh, next up, we have Habitats, which is a game that came out like six or seven years ago. And I did a bit of a game swap with one of my friends. Uh, I gave them Selenia and they gave me Habitats. So uh, this is a tile lane game and I do like tile lane games. And from what I remember, there's, there was something cool about it. Honestly, I don't remember what it was. I remember watching Rado's uh, run through of this one like a year and a half ago and saying, wow, that looks cool. And I put it on my wish list and then a friend had it. So um, I should really read the rules to remember why I was interested in playing it, but I have a copy now so I can try it. Uh, next up, I got a copy of Judge Dread Helter Skelter from Os Osprey Games. Uh, they sent that over to me, and this appears to be a Judge Dread reskin of Wildlands, which is a game that came out about a year ago, I think almost exactly a year ago. Uh, that's a Martin Wallace design where you are running around a dungeon trying to smack each other over the head. Um, it's sort of like a player uh, uh, combat type of thing, but it also has some euro -y card management stuff. And uh, apparently there are some slight rules tweaks for this Judge Dread version. I played Wildlands once at Board Game Geekcon last year and I thought it was fine. It's not really my type of game, so um, I'm curious about this one, although it's definitely not necessarily in my wheelhouse. Uh, this one arrived and I, I was not expecting it. Uh, so now we can move on and the next game is Pharon. Uh, this is a new game that's uh, coming out at Spiel in just a couple weeks. And in fact, I've played this one and I just covered it a few days ago in the last impressions vlog that I put out. Uh, I only covered three games in that vlog. It was Tapestry, Ecos, and Pharon. And there was so much uh, hype for Tapestry and a little bit for Ecos that not a single person even commented on Pharon in that video. So I think it got a little bit dwarfed in that impressions vlog. But if you're curious about learning about it, uh, then please go check that out. This is a, a game that it, it's, it's very much about gaining resources to spend resources. It has a bit of a worker placement blocking type of thing going on without actually having workers and a really cool passing mechanism. So I definitely advise you uh, at least check that out. I talk about it for about 10 minutes or so in that video. Uh, next up, I have a copy of Preta Porte, I think is how you're sort of supposed to say that. I don't know how you speak French. Uh, it's actually right here on the table. You can't see it. It's just off of the camera. I'm in the middle of uh, filming a video for it. That's why I got a copy. I've, I've filmed the tutorial, and tomorrow I intend to film the rest of the extended playthrough. This is a game that was published like six or seven years ago, and this is a reprint that has a brand new art and whatnot. It's a worker placement style game where each person is in charge of a fashion agency trying to put together collections of fashionable stuff and then you send it out to uh, exhibition shows and depending on how well you do, you get some awards and those give you money and points and you're trying to just do the best you can on the fashion show circuit. So um, I'm curious to see how it goes. At this point, I've only played one out of 12 rounds in the game for the tutorial. So I'm curious to see where this game goes. Uh, next up, there is Tapestry. And as I mentioned before, I did just cover my impressions of that in the last week's impressions vlog. So uh, feel free to check that out. Um, honestly, if you're watching this vlog, odds are good. You've heard about this game already. It has a ridiculous amount of hype and coverage overall. It's a uh, Civ themed Euro we game with a decent amount of randomness and resource optimization and combo -y type stuff. All right, the last game that I got is a game called Town Builder Covorden, I believe is how you pronounce that. Uh, this is a small game and it actually just arrived in the mail yesterday. I have not cracked open the shrink wrap on this one, but the reason I got it is because I am going to be doing a sponsored tutorial and playthrough for it probably at some point in November. Um, I remember I read through the rules and thought it looked interesting enough to say yes, but I don't remember those rules at this point. I believe there's a uh, card tableau building and whatnot going on there. So I'm looking forward to cracking into that to see what's going on there because I am obviously going to make a video for it. So uh, yeah, that's uh, the shifting shelf for this month. Lots of stuff coming out uh, and lots of stuff coming in as is not too surprising. Uh, Essence Spiel is uh, just a couple weeks away and I'm not going this year. So I'm not going to be <laughs> getting 30 new games. The last two years I came home with like 30 plus new games. Uh, hopefully I'll get a couple of them that I can convince people to ship them over to me in California, but uh, definitely not the kind of influx that I've had the last couple of years. All right, we can now move on to the next section. And that is the upcoming schedule for the channel. Uh, now, this week, it's week 41 when I'm publishing this video. And I'm planning on publishing 
tomorrow, the day after this, in the middle of this week, a tutorial and playthrough for Terramara. This is a new medium to slightly heavyweight Euro uh, game coming out from Quinted Games. It's got worker placement with some pretty cool tweaks overall. Uh, so yeah, definitely keep your eye out for that one. Uh, that's going to be a spiel release. And then uh, later on this week, I'm planning on putting out the videos for Prada Porter, Preta Porte, uh, that again is right here on the table. I have to finish that video so that I can publish that later on this week. Uh, next week, uh, next Monday, I believe, I will be publishing a video for the new Tiny Epic Game. Now, I don't think they've actually announced what it is yet, so I'm not allowed to say. Um, I have it. <laughs> uh, I actually played a prototype of it back at Origins. Uh, so yeah, I'm planning on filming that one later on this week so that I'm ready for next Monday. And um, so relatively soon, you'll find out what the next Tiny Epic Game is. At this point, I think I've done a video for every single one of them for the past like four or so years. Uh, Gamelin Games was one of the, the first clients that I had with the channel, so I really appreciate that ongoing uh, business. Uh, next week, I'm also going to be doing a Games Radar vlog where I talk about new games that I've learned about since the last one of those, and uh, also I'm going to be coming out with a uh, sponsored uh, tutorial and playthrough for Rurik. Now, uh, I'm planning on putting it out this week. This is obviously the plan. Uh, sometimes things get shifted around as uh, life happens, but uh, this is uh, a euro -y game with a action auction or something like that with a little bit of area control, I believe. I haven't really dug into the rules of that one yet. It's still in shrink over there in my studio, kind of underneath some other boxes. I'm planning on getting to that one relatively soon once I finish the next Tiny Epic game. Uh, in week 43, I'm going to be doing another Impressions vlog, and I might be putting out a sponsored playthrough for Tris Magistus. Now, I say might because I am planning on doing that. Um, uh, I've been planning on doing a video for this one for about seven months when uh, Board and Dice told me about it back at Gamma, but I don't have a copy of it yet, and they haven't told me when I'm going to get a copy of it, so I will potentially put out a video for it uh, at that point. Um, this one is being designed by the same people who did, I believe, Newton and Coimbra and Lorenzo Il Magnifico, I think some uh, of those have matching designers for this one. Apparently it's a big, heavy, uh, strategic uh, Euro game, but I haven't actually dug into it yet because I don't have a copy. Uh, that week I'm also planning on putting out the Patreon-sponsored tutorial and playthrough, but I don't know what that's going to be yet because I haven't actually put out the poll for that. I should probably do that so that I can know what that's going to be. Um, in week 44, I'm going to be putting out, uh, planning on putting out a video for Wonderland's War, which is a uh, going to be a Kickstarter game uh, for Skybound Games or Druid City Games. I'm not sure which one of those two names is correct, but um, I've done a few videos for them in the past. Uh, on the same day, I'm planning on putting out a video for another Kickstarter. They're both appear to be launching on the same day uh, for a game called Chronicles of Drunagor. Now, uh, this game I've actually finished the video for. I filmed it about a week and a half ago, uh, and they wanted me to, to do that early so I could ship it onto somebody else because it's a big box and they only had a couple prototypes. Uh, so that one's done. <laughs> I'm, yay me. I got that one in the hopper. I can publish that one at the right time. And that is a uh, dungeon crawl with some kind of Euro-y um, action resource optimization type stuff going on. Uh, that week, I'm also hoping to put out... Uh, a bonus video uh, that's uh, going to be picked and uh, voted on by the contributing producer level supporters of the channel at Patreon. But at this point, I have not sent out that poll yet either, so I'm not sure where that's going to be. All right, well, that's the rough idea of what my schedule is going to be uh, looking over uh, the month of October. Uh, you may have noticed that there is no questions and answers vlog. Um, this is like the third month in a row where I keep saying, ah, I'm planning on doing it next month. But when I looked at the amount of stuff that I need to cover this month, especially with Spiel around the corner and lots of these videos needing to happen before then, I just don't think I can work it in. So hopefully November will end up being uh, a little bit um, uh, uh, easier going. In fact, I can tell you right now that at this point, I am going, I'm stopping the amount of videos I'm taking for November, like I'm saying I'm closed until at least December, even though I'm not crazy in November because I need to catch up and kind of catch my breath overall. And it would, of course, be great to also have room to do something like a live questions and answer vlog. All right. I think that's going to bring us to the end of this update. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you could do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.